My friends, it's time for the 300,000 subscriber update. Out of breath, climbing a hill in Benicia territory. 300,000 subscribers is pretty amazing. But I think more importantly, this is the third anniversary right around this time. I actually don't remember what day it was, but right around this time, I quit my job and I became a full-time YouTuber. So I've been walking this tightrope without a net <laughs> for three years now, and it's still working. I really appreciate you coming along for the ride. Yeah, full-time on YouTube, full-time on Patreon, really. <laughs> That's how this all actually happened. I made the call to my people and I said, hey, if you guys wanna join me and actually support this, how about you join Patreon? Three bucks a month, get extended and early videos. And from the start, I was able to drum up a lot of support and get people on the, on the ride, on the boat. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Okay, one quick note. People have said that my extended cut videos on Patreon are the best possible thing to watch while they're on the indoor trainer. Winter is coming, and whether or not you're trapped inside or winter or not, if you're a fit person, you're probably on the trainer, and you're probably always looking for YouTube videos to watch and stuff. So just a note, if you sign up on Patreon right now, there's three years worth of extended cut videos that are all about 45 minutes long. So there's probably 150, 200 videos that are 45 minutes long and really good, fun content to watch while you're on the trainer. Okay, okay. Back to it. The timeline of when I quit my job is fuzzy and also how many subscribers I had. When I quit my job, I think it was less than 5,000 subscribers when I quit my job, which is insane. But I knew that you guys liked what I was doing. And I knew that eventually I could figure out a way to make it work. Because even as I stumbled through the beginnings of the channel, people were finding it, people were commenting, people were really stoked on it. And every once in a while, I'll go back and I'll watch some of the older videos, especially the subscriber updates. The old subscriber updates are always classics. And uh, it's pretty amazing how <laughs> I, could, I could always talk, I could always be funny. <laughs> that was always there. I didn't really develop that <laughs> much more. The, the talking was always pretty compelling and you know, the camera was pretty okay. And I, I'm actually kind of proud of the old videos. Okay, not kind of proud, really proud. I actually went back this weekend. Me and my brother were watching an old video from last year. Oh no, I'm not going down there. <laughs> Me and Eric from BCPOV on Lord of the Squirrels. And most of the time, if I'm watching an old video with an audience, like with people sitting around, it's just like, oh, I hate it so much. But I really enjoyed that Lord of the Squirrels video. I was very, very proud of my editing and the, how it just kept going and kept going quick and good cuts, no fat. Yeah, I was, I was actually psyched. It usually takes me about a year before I can watch one of my videos again, which is funny because many times I've been on the couch of someone who's invited me to come ride their area and they're like, oh, let's throw on a, a BKXC video. <laughs> I don't wanna watch it. <laughs> I've just spent eight to 10 hours working on that video. I don't wanna see it. <laughs> I've, I've memorized it and to sit through it again <laughs> is too much. Oh man, the sun is coming out now. It's gonna be a roaster. The first day of fall right here, right now. The other thing that really keeps this channel going is merch. So I've got my new gloves here, uh, my new jersey. I got a hat, I got the, the red pain and pleasure shirt, which is basically sold out. There's a couple sizes left and I'm doing a reorder right now. So there will be more on the way. That helps so much. So I'm always striving to actually make this stuff cool. <laughs> Cause it's, if it's actually cool, if it actually looks good, if it's colors you like, then boom, it's an easy purchase. And that helps the channel so much. This new rebooting of merch that I've done, I spent so much money to have the inventory, but if I sell through all of it, it's gonna really help. Really help keep gas in the van for next year. Quick update on the van. Not much to update. <laughs> We've got swivel seats installed. I've got some solar, not installed. My dad's got a, a roof rack on top of the, 
the van installed very much taking it slow because my plan is to go to Wayfair Vans in November and just get the whole plug and play kit installed boom one and done and not spend months tinkering and getting it wrong and just uh time is money I'd rather spend on doing it right my dad and I will still do some projects in the van we'll still have some DIY action to share with you guys but it's not going to be a whole whole big thing so just to be clear I'm not moving into the van I still like my house <laughs> there's no reason to give that up I like having a place but uh, the plan is next year to be spending a lot of time on the road and uh, going up and down left and right the highways and byways finding hidden gems that are out there waiting for me and my hope for next year is to just keep a loose schedule I am so much an over planner I like to have everything locked down and timed out so next year I'm going to try my best to just let it rip go and do if an opportunity comes up go for it if the weather's bad in Alabama go to Mississippi just to stay as as nimble as possible and I don't want to see any comments that say hit me up when you're in Mississippi <laughs> that is my ultimate pet peeve and let me explain why I would love to ride with you if you're in Mississippi but you need to send me an email <laughs> and let me know and set up a plan I will not remember your random YouTube name your random Instagram comment <laughs> hey I'm in Mississippi there was seven people that said I should hit them up let me go searching through my old posts almost every single person I've ever ridden with on my YouTube channel has emailed me and said hey man if you ever come here here's some good trails these are awesome let's do it and that begins a relationship <laughs> where we go back and forth and nine times out of ten it doesn't work out but that one time out of ten is how all my videos have come together so because my plan is to stay loose and wander I'm gonna try to use trail forks for a lot of my riding next year and I need your help if you can get into trail forks and rate trails rate routes leave comments on stuff it helps so much because I love looking through trail forks and you can see like the best trails by state and going through and being like oh yeah I'm gonna do this when I'm there the real key is that your trail club the people that build the trails in your area really need to own trail forks and get in there and make sure all the trails are there and the statuses are updated and parking lots and water fountains are marked it's such a huge help but if you're not interested in seeing me ride your local trails don't worry about it <laughs> no action required stuff like this I, I mark this bench on trail forks so people know there's a bench <laughs> it's kind of cool I am so happy that three years in the community the comments are still so positive and everything is not turned into total garbage I've, uh, I've banned so many people like <laughs> I've definitely anytime there's something negative I just ban someone so <laughs> that helps a lot over the past three years but it's just it's awesome it gives me a good feeling to check the comments I think most people with any kind of public you know social media anything they don't want to read the comments it doesn't give them a boost and of course there's still stuff that uh, stings and it hurts because I'm a real person and uh, you'd be surprised how fragile and lonely I am but <laughs> it's uh, just amazing that this community is still going strong and that the positivity and oh it's it's amazing I want to think it's because I'm actually in the comments and I read every comment and that I respond to a lot of comments I don't respond to every comment thankfully YouTube has the heart thing so I can basically acknowledge if someone says hey man good video and I acknowledge it it's like giving it a thumbs up but if someone has a thoughtful question or a comment that they've spent some time on I always try to hop in and respond and that uh, I think that's the little secret sauce of why the community is so positive it's just I'm here I'm here for you you're here for me it's a powerful thing 
So what next for BKXC? That's always the question. And uh, I'm only three years in, so I'd say it's probably gonna be 10 years before anything ever really comes of this and it develops into something that I want it to be. The focus is always on the videos. What is gonna make the best kind of video? And there's this funny thing, as a YouTuber, as a creator, as a novelist, as whatever you do that's creative, there's a balance between what you wanna do and what the audience wants. Both sides of that equation are really tough because if you only do what's good for views, you will be morally bankrupt. You're just gonna get drained. And if you only do what you want, you're gonna be monetarily bankrupt <laughs> because the point of everything is to still find an audience. Whether you're a painter or a novelist or whatever, your point is still, still to have people enjoy it. If you think about Renaissance master painters and how they kind of kicked around and they had to do sponsored content <laughs> to keep them alive and they'd do their own fun stuff on the side. Or, you know, maybe like Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, it was a paid gig where he was actually able to create a masterpiece versus something on the side. It's a very interesting dynamic. You know, I classically, three years ago in my video where I said I was going for it, I was talking about Joey Trek and how I didn't want sponsored videos to take over the channel and for me to have to BS and toe the line. And of course, since then, I have done sponsored videos. And in my heart of hearts, I still feel good about it. I don't feel like it's a sellout thing. And no one who's ever sold out thinks it's a sellout thing, <laughs> of course. But the, the content I was able to put out from, through sponsored videos, I'll still do a few here and there. I think it's been perfect. I don't think it's overrun the channel. I think I've gotten people's message out and helped pay the bills. So yeah, my thought was always that I thought my channel was so valuable and I still think it is, but I really, <laughs> I kind of almost had a delusion that you know, a big sponsor would come in before I was actually established, before I actually had the choice to say, no, 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 I'm not gonna take X amount of dollars per month, per year, and go by your rules of whatever those rules might be. You can't ride other bikes, you can't cuss, you can't do this. So being able to build the channel on my own terms from the beginning, that was really what the Joey Trek thing was about for me. Ah, trail's looking good here. And it was just about getting you guys fired up and, and seeing that it is possible. We all get together and do something. A little bit from everyone trumps a lot from one person or one company. Ooh. Oh, a little slippery. Always is on that turn. Good line of sight. I did a lot of clearing out here and uh, I'm glad. Oh yeah riding pretty good actually hell yeah the future yeah yeah I was talking about the future before I got off on a few different rants there the goal for this channel has always been to basically build something else to build something that's bigger than me that's bigger than the channel to build something that outlives me like it's gonna be great that these videos are gonna be <laughs> online forever and hopefully my great great grandkids are gonna see them and It'll, it'll be this like living memorial, this scrapbook of my life, which I just think is the coolest thing. But to build something, to build a product, to build some kind of company that's bigger than me and that uh, I can tell the story of straight from my channel. I think that's the only thing that separates businesses right now is storytelling. And if you run a business and you aren't telling the story of why you do what you do, why you pick what you pick, if you're a pool cleaner, there's a thousand things. There's a thousand fit ways you can tell your story about why you, you choose this over this or why these types of pools are better than other types of pools. It, it's unlimited. And I think storytelling and connection to companies is, that's the big thing. It's why do people do what they do? Why do they, why do they pick what they pick? Why do they sell what they sell? And that connection is, uh, it's everything. So it's what I think about and finding opportunities and 
ah, building things and when you try to build stuff it takes a lot longer than you think so <laughs> I've been thinking about this for three years and it might be another five before anything happens but that's what it's all about moving forward not moving backwards and I think I'm also very very lucky that I just I care about the views it matters my whole life is measured by views and I think that's such a weird thing but uh, I don't obsess I don't go in the first hour and check every hour and see, oh, okay, this video is getting off to a great start. I just don't care. I do the best I can while I'm filming, while I'm talking, while I'm editing, and then it's out of my hands. When I upload it, as long as I got a decent title and thumbnail, I've done the best I can. And then it's up to the YouTube gods to figure it out from there. I am human though. I do look at my most popular videos and be like, man, should I even bother just going on a ride and showing up and seeing if anything comes out of it? Or should everything be crafted? Should everything be thought through top to bottom? Because those are the videos that do good. If you look at Seth, if you look at Alexander, even Paul the Puncher, the best videos that just blow up, they're videos that are thought about from the top to bottom. I actually think it's pretty damn silly that I can come back from almost every single ride and feel like, yeah, that was a cool video. But that's really, that's me. You go out, you see what happens and you capture the ride as it is and it's, it's organic, <laughs> it's natural and it's always pretty cool. I've been doing these subscriber update videos for a long time since my first shoot, was it 50 subscribers? 25 subscribers, 100 subscribers, I forget. Probably 100 subscribers I did my first video. So if you like the podcast style, bike ride there's a playlist for you in the description check out all my subscriber updates if you're actually interested in hearing me talk more about the behind the scenes stuff i do a patreon podcast once a month i get a bunch of questions from the audience and talk and talk about what's going on luca k wants to know would i ride the bc bike race on a hardtail oh hell no people seem to dig it i think the deeper you can make the connection, the better it is. And that's really how I've built the whole channel is by going deep. Man, three years doing this and we're still so early on. It's still the, the early days of the medium of sloppy, <laughs> sloppy videos created by normal people. Who would have ever thought if you'd put the power in the hands of the people that so many things, so many exciting things would happen that TV studios and movie studios would never have thought up, would never have made possible. It's a great time to be alive, my friends. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.